single camera production is a production in which only one camera is used. There are many benefits to using solely one camera, which is why it is used by lots of different media. For example, it is utilised by soap operas, documentaries, music videos and movies. TV comedies like The Inbetweeners and Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy utilise single camera. The purpose of a TV comedy is to make the audience laugh. Adverts like the Frosties advert, the Maum advert and the Cadbury's Gorilla advert all use single camera. Adverts are used to promote their product or service. Music videos also often use single camera, like Taylor Swift's Delicate or Skrillex's Bangarang, and music video's purpose is to enhance the music. Even corporate videos use single camera productions, such as the IKEA training video. You are able to view these single camera productions in a variety of different places and platforms. For example, you can watch television shows on your TV at home, you can watch movies at the cinema, as well as film festivals. For example, there is the recent Shanghai Queer Film Festival. This is the moment the night vision is turned on and we see the creatures on the ceiling. A deep focus is used, as well as an over-the-shoulder shot. The equipment they use is only a camcorder, using night vision. The shot is taken in a very low amount of focus, producing a sense of realism, and creates a powerful sense of fear when the parasites are revealed to be crawling along the ceiling. The over-the-shoulder shot provides us with inf information that only the person holding the camera has realised the danger they are in, as the other character is looking into the lens and not the screen. We suddenly see the closest parasite dangle down and drop down, still without focus, revealing to us that it is definitely on its way, and we worry about if the characters will manage to escape. The glowing eyes produces more realism, as they are produced from the night vision in the camera, but the way the parasite's eyes all glow produces more fear. It tells us that they are watching the characters, and are almost looking into the lens, making it feel like we are being watched too. In this shot, the camera holder has fallen to the ground and is scrabbling to stand as a parachute jumps onto him. This shot is taken with more focus than the last, allowing us to get a better look at the parasite's appearance. The person holding the camera is panicking and making the camera shake as he tries to kick the creature away, producing more realism for the scene, as we can tell that the movement is chaotic and terrifying for the people involved. The found footage aspect of the movie helps us in the moment because we really don't know if the person filming will escape, and we can hear the panic in his voice as he calls out for help, his voice eventually becoming one of relief when a different character begins hitting the creature, forcing it off. The camera is positioned very slightly below the parasite, giving it a powerful and dangerous feel. It is relentlessly trying to bite the person. It, help it also helps us to imagine the helpless feeling the camera holder is feeling, as he cannot stand and scrambles to get away. In this shot, HUD points the camera down to film swarms of rats punt running past them. It uses a great deal of focus, easily showing us that they are rats. The floor and rats are bathed in light from the camera, whereas when he points the camera behind them, you can barely see the other rats in the darkness. This is a show of realism, as a camera really wouldn't be able to see that far in the dark. The high angle shot makes the rats seem weak, despite their numbers, making us feel like there may be a dangerous predator in the tunnels. The camera only sways the amount a normal person would while out of breath showing us that the group are calm, tired, and unaware of the dangers that are soon to follow. In this scene, the pair watch a man become infected by the music. The high angle shot shows the victim to be weak and overwhelmed, while also fully showing the large crowd surrounding him. The shot takes a deep focus, allowing us to see everything in a high amount of detail. The impression the scene imposes on the viewer is one of shock and fear, but also humour, as the, as the idea around the whole narrative is humorous. The camera slowly zooms on the duo's faces, alternating between them and the crowd, eventually ending with a close-up of their faces, allowing us to see their funny, scared-up expressions. In this scene, the crowd, including the duo, break out into a choreographed dance for the main beat of the song. The camera moves and pans throughout the whole scene, alternating between high shots, low shots, wide shots and mid shots, producing a highly dramatic effect. It imposes a feeling of awe upon the viewer, as the dancers move to the beat with almost perfection, all moving as one, the movements of the camera and the bright colours of the video causing you to be unable to take your eyes off the screen. A deep focus is also used, providing us with a detailed view of the variety of costumes and characters involved. The longer you look, the more outlandish the wardrobe choices become, and the camera moves to focus on many of the different people for only a matter of seconds before moving to someone else.
In this shot, everyone has gathered into a circle and watching people freestyle in the middle. The camera is still in deep focus to show everyone in detail and zooms on the dancing people, making us focus on them and their dancing. The camera also pans around in a circle, giving us a perspective of everyone. A high angle is most often used, in this case presenting unity, showing them sit simply as we see it, a crowd of people partying and dancing together. As the viewers, this gives us a warm, wholesome feeling, as originally the video is about fear, it has become much happier and just about dancing. In this scene, the bodyguard is climbing the stairs to the roof. The camera is positioned above him, showing him to be vulnerable, as he could be walking into a trap. The focus is shallow at some points, making us focus on him and his expression, while at other points it is deep, letting us view his surroundings. The feeling imposed upon us is one of suspense, as the music is quiet and constant and the camera tracks the bodyguard, making us hope he gets out of his situation alive. He has a face of focus and his gun is raised at all times, implying that he's ready for any threat. This shot shows us an extreme close-up of the bodyguard's eyes and his client's eyes. It allows us to see the panic and fear in her eyes, while the bodyguard clearly has a sense of calm and determination. The shot is very shallow, so that we cannot focus on anything except their eyes. If you were to only see this shot, you would assume that while they're both in danger, the woman is terrified, while the man seems to hold at least some control and sturdiness in the situation. This shows how well the extreme close-up shot is used, as it does its job correctly. This makes the viewer afraid for the two of them, but also provides us with subtle reassurance that everything will be okay, as if we are being protected by the bodyguard. In this very short clip, the bodyguard moves to the stairs and stops as the camera zooms towards his face, stopping at a close-up. The camera is in a shallow focus, once again causing us to focus on his determined and serious expression. The zoom ends as he turns his head, as if the camera stopped moving as he looked in its direction, making it feel like the camera is slightly afraid of him. This implies that he is ready and determined to put an end to the current situation and get his client out of danger. The movement makes the audience react in a hopeful, angry manner, as if we are really there, cheering him on. An establishing shot shows the location of the next scene of a media. Usually taking form in a long shot of a building slash place, it gives the viewer an idea of where the characters are. A master shot is the recording of an entire scene, from start to finish, from a position that keeps everyone in view. It is often said that all of the shots in a scene relate to what is happening in the master shot. In a tracking shot, the camera is mounted on a dolly, allowing it to move easily and smoothly. This allows the camera to follow the subject like someone walking. A cutaway is when a scene is suddenly interrupted by inserting a view of something other than the subject. The camera generally cuts back to the first shot, as shown by the above image. They are used to adjust the pace of the action, or to allow the two versions of that shot to be joined. A wide shot is used to show lots of elements of a scene at once, or to show a larger scale subject. It can also be used to show someone standing in their surroundings. For example, when two people are both shown at once while talking, or to show a large setting like a beach. Mid shots are used to show a character's appearance in moderate detail, always from the waist up. It gives a good look at the appearance, emotion, props and stance on the character, all in one shot. A two shot consists of two characters together. It usually presents a relationship to the viewer, be it intimate, friendship or family, and sometimes even presents a relationship between enemies. It is often used at a significant moment between the two characters, such as a conversation or to increase dramatic effect. A medium close-up is a shot which comes halfway between a mid shot and a close-up. It puts the focus heavily on the subject, focusing the viewer less on the surroundings. It gives us a good view of the facial expressions and is often used in dramatic introductions of characters. A close-up shot is a shot taken a short distance away from the subject. It is used for a variety of reasons, for showing the emotion in a character's face, or to present detail in a particular feature. Extreme close-ups are a shot taken inches from the subject. It is often used to show very subtle changes in someone's expression or demeanour. For example, a bead of sweat or a slight twitch. It can also be used to simply give us a closer look at a feature. Point of view shots are used to make the viewer feel like they're in the shoes of a particular character, as the shot involves the camera being positioned where someone's eyes would usually be, giving us a view of their perspective. The rule of thirds in media is where you picture a grid of nine squares on the frame and try to position the subject at any of the four centre corners. Over the shoulder shots are shots which are taken from over a character's shoulder. They are usually used when two characters are having a conversation. 
eye-level shots are taken from the height of a character's eyes, as if they are looking straight at us, making the viewer feel like they are really in the scene. To do this, the actor looks straight into the lens. A shot reverse shot is a shot which shows one character looking at something, then cuts to another person looking the other way. This tells us that they are talking, or at least looking at each other. It gives us a good look at their faces. A bird's eye angle positions the camera high up, directly above the subject, looking down. A high angle positions the camera above the characters. It is used for lots of different reasons, sometimes just for a new perspective on a large subject, to present the characters as weak or powerless, or to show a sense of unity. A low angle positions the camera below the subject. It is used to present dominance, power and strength. It can also be used to show a character as aggressive or ominous. A Dutch tilt puts the camera at an askew angle, making the viewer feel uneasy or even ill. A handheld camera is a camera which isn't shot on a dolly or tripod. The cameraman holds onto the camera himself. This can be used to give a documentary, unprofessional feel, as it produces unfocus and sway. Sometimes the camera is held by the actors themselves, the best example being the monster movie Cloverfield. A shoulder-mounted camera is still less sturdy than a dolly or a tripod camera, but allows the camera to move with less sway than the handheld. The position can be adjusted, allowing easy operation. A steady cam is a type of stabilising equipment for cameras. It isolates the cameraman's movement, allowing for a smooth shot. A track is used when you know exactly where you want the camera to move in a path. It locks the movement to a specific path, like a train track. A dolly is a wheeled device, which allows for a camera to be mounted. It is used to move the camera around smoothly, with no sway in the shot. A jib is a device with a camera at one end, and a counterweight slash camera controls at the other. The balance allows the camera to be easily moved. To dolly is to move a camera on a dolly in a specific direction. Tracking involves following a moving object slash person with the camera, like someone running. The dolly zoom takes advantage of the expected visual perception among the audience. It is an unsettling zoom on the subject, while the surroundings generally zoom much slower, or vice versa. Panning is where the camera is turned horizontally, in a panoramic fashion, to cast a wide view. When zooming, the shot gets close to the subject during the shot. Focus pulling involves changing the focus while the shot is being taken.